Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mika Straight Up, created with support from Bank of America. So earlier, I spoke with New York Times bestseller and my friend, world-renowned body language expert, Janine Driver. And the timing could not be more perfect for this podcast, because as we sort of come in and out and back in and back out from this pandemic, a lot of people have been working at home or are beginning to go back a couple of days a week, or maybe they're back full time. Who knows? But everything feels new all over again. And often our body language can send so many messages about what our stress level is, what our anxiety level is, whether we like where we are or not, what our attitude is. And so Janine has great advice in terms of what is useful, powerful, effective body language. She's also just an amazing person. She's so real. She's not afraid to share vulnerable stories about her ups and downs in life. And we had a lot to catch up on. Take a listen. Do you already feel like you have too much to do in 2022? I do. I'm totally swamped. It's like, and you know what? Women do enough. We already do everything, literally everything, and weirdly, with remote now, remote access, and all the other attributes to this pandemic, some very negative for women, women are doing more. We're doing more, not less. And there's a theme we're going to talk about here, because recently I spoke to 500 women out in San Diego. It was a Know Your Value event, and I was really hoping to talk about how important it would be to get back in the office, start mentoring the younger ones and all of this. And I said, how many of you are remote? And they all raised their hand. And I said, and how many of you hate it? And nobody raised their hand. And I said, how many of you love it? And everyone raised their hand. And I was like, oh my gosh, please stand up, come to the microphone, tell me why. And woman after woman after woman came to the microphone and said, we get more done. Because I can get more done. Because I can be in three places at once. Because I don't have that commute and I can take care of my kids and do my job and make dinner and online shop for my family and get errands done and fix problems and, 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 and all at once. We're doing more guys, <laughs> ladies, actually, <laughs> not the guys. I think they are too. But my next guest is an expert at solving this. And I'm awful at this, by the way. I, I, if I can do more, I'll add 10 more things on top of that. If you listen to Mika straight up, you know that about me. And you know it's a problem, a real problem, not a sort of like, oh, I have too much to do flutter, flutter, need to drink more water. No, like literally my life has fallen apart a few times because I've tried to do too much. You know, it's important to have some boundaries, to have some separation, to make some space. Um, it's about sort of owning the laws of subtraction, so to speak, making room, um, embracing change in your life, even loss. And my next guest is a New York Times bestselling author. She's a world-renowned body language expert, which we're going to touch on because she's so good on this, and a retired ATF investigator. She's also my friend, Janine Driver. She's part of the Know Your Value community. Janine. Mika, I love you. Happy New Year. <laughs> I love you, and you have COVID. I have COVID right now. I do. And I, you know, to speak to your point of all the women that stood up and said they love being at home, I had an office up the street and I gave it up a couple months ago. And just last week, before I knew I had COVID, the day before Christmas Eve, I had my youngest son, I have three sons, a seven-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a 16. And my youngest, Jack, goes, mom, I was being fussy. And he goes, mom, do you need a hug? And I go, Jack, I do need a hug. And he hugged me and I cried. And I go, how did you know I needed a hug? And he goes, I asked you. <laughs> I go, okay, but what made you ask me, honey? And it's those little moments that we get when we're at home. And it was a work day. So I still was working and I got to get a hug from Jack. What a blessing, right? Mm. You get so much right here. You can do everything. And it is a, there are those blessings uh, of being able to be at home 
and being able to do many things at once and be there for many people. Um, but I, I also think that there are some challenges, um, especially when I heard from those women and every single answer was I can get more done, yeah. which I understand. I love getting more done. Give me more to do. I'll get more done. Um, but I'm already kind of stressed out about 2022. Like I've got uh, I'm going to Poland. I, I'm got a huge event I'm doing and across the world and then there's the show and I'm not complaining. It's amazing. But because I get up at three 30 in the morning, I have that bracing exhaustion at all times. And as a result, I sort of wear my stress, like all the things I have to do, you can read them practically on my face. And there is something to be said for stopping and for making space for stopping. Yes. Janine, you've had You've had in the past two years a lot of stopping, a lot of loss. Yeah, I'm divorced, recently divorced. I got divorced last March. Uh, we were separated the year before. I'm the moneymaker. He was unemployed. And one of the reasons that led to my divorce, I couldn't take it. He, it was like raising a teenager. Uh, I, I had lost 140 pounds for back in the day. I gained 85 of that back. Um, during COVID and going through the divorce, um, now I'm a single mom. I get along great with my ex-husband because I'm the one that paid the alimony. Hello. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's just money. And I want to talk about the love subtraction. If you think about Mika and, and you listening at home or in your car or work, it, we have approximately 9,876 hours in a year. That's it. 9,876 hours in a year. About half of those, Mika, and you at home are spent sleeping, going to the bathroom, taking a shower, brushing your teeth, catching up with friends. So you're left with about 4,500 hours to decide what to do with your time. Where do you have to subtract to actually get more of the life that you want? Uh, you know, I love the law of attraction. I, I became a New York Times bestselling author because the law of attraction. I remember I watched a video by a marketing guy named Dan Kennedy and on, a, on, a, on a VCR tape. And he was talking to restaurant people and he said, hey, say you have the world's best meatball or you have the world's best Italian food. And someone else would say, no, I have the world's best meatball or Italian food. He goes, you just got to claim it. And I went to ATF that next day. I always would get a bagel at my friend Ben. And he knocked on the door and he goes, bagel time. I go, Ben, shut the door. I don't know how to tell you this, but you need to sit down. He goes, what? I go, I'm leaving ATF. I, I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I go on TV shows. I've written a couple books. I go on, on uh, internationally. I go on radio shows, podcasts, didn't exist back then. He goes, when did this happen? I said to him, Mika, and you at home, I said, last night about 8.40 p.m., and I remember, so then that led to me creating a website. Then I got on the Today Show. And then I'm like, oh, this Rachel Ray person, she's kind of, everyone's paying attention to her. And I remember my son, my oldest, who's now 16, was a baby. He was taking a nap. And I went on Rachel Ray's website because the law of attraction is a like attracts like, right? You've got to manifest what you like. My mother would say, get rid of your stinking thinking. You know, if you said anything negative, I like to say your subconscious has no sense of humor. So if you say my back is killing me, you program your brain to say, okay, let me figure out a way to kill you. So my mother would always say, cancel, cancel, if we said something negative. So I'm so lucky I was raised with someone who just understood this world of positivity and same body of stinking thinking. So I, I write to Rachel Ray, all the upcoming segments. You think your son is smoking? And I'm like, hey, I'm the human lie detector. I can teach you the three questions to ask to know with 100% certainty if your son is smoking. Meeting the future in-laws for the first time. Hey, I can teach you what side to sit on to win them over immediately. And the facial expression to look for, to know she doesn't like you, your future mother-in-law. And that was a Wednesday. Come Friday, I got a phone call. Janine Driver, Maggie Barnes, The Rachel Ray Show. I said, Maggie, I've been expecting your phone call. <laughs> I love now, that. that's, that, I wasn't screaming and yelling. That's what the law of attraction is. When you hear people talking about this manifesting, and I know some people might think this is baloney, but look at the people in your life that all of a sudden they have success. All of a sudden they lost weight. All of a sudden they found the love of their life. Are they positive people? The answer is probably yes. So right now, me being single, I want God to write my next love story. So I realize the law of subtraction needs to come into place. So 
how can a man, how can God or the universe, whatever you believe, how is that? It's infinite, right? So how is that going to, how's God, I believe God, how's he going to drop on this ideal man, this love story he's writing for me? If all my bureaus in my bedroom are full, I got rid of my ex-husband and I filled up all the bureaus. I filled up my closet. So just two days ago, I emptied a bureau and it wasn't easy. It took a day and a half to do it. And I bought a Valentine's Day card, Mika, and I wrote, and it's beautiful. It says, you're my soulmate, the love of my life. And I put it in the empty top drawer of this bureau. And all I wrote was, I've been expecting you. Love, Janine. And so time will tell, but that's the law of subtraction. It's not minimizing this minimalism trend. It's about what do you need to remove from your life to bring in what you want? If we have 4,500 hours in a year, those things that you said you're about to do and you're about to do international travel, is, is that really worth your 4,500 hours? It makes you make smarter decisions when you say, okay, what do I need to subtract so I can actually bring in what it is that I want? Does that make sense? It does. And, you know, my first trip is all about family and it's about holding a family together and mm. it's totally worth it. And at the same time, just fitting everything into the day, I think, especially since we're all remote and we can work all day long, can be very stressful for a lot of women, especially if your day starts at like four in the morning, because it just never ends. And it's this one big blob of constancy. So you also have to maybe pick and choose what are the things in your day that can give you a little bit of space. I mean, it doesn't often have to be like a man, get rid of a man. Although when you need to, that's important. Um, but that's what about right. day to day? Is there anything you can do to sort of get through, the, to synthesize uh, the things that you do with the things that you really need to do to make better decisions, especially if you don't have a lot of sleep? And I think a lot of women are exhausted. They're doing everything 24-7. Well, I, so I make my money as a keynote speaker talking on body language for, you know, sales and leadership and HR. You? Yeah, and HR. And I was, I like to speak for free. It's one of my ways to give back to women's groups and to schools where there's kids. Um, it's, I feel like it balances the playing field. But just a week ago, I was asked to speak at a school for free, but they wanted it in person. And I said, I'm not willing to do that. Little did I know I'm getting COVID. I'm willing to do it on a webinar. They can Zoom me in. I can do more than one. But I wasn't willing to leave my three sons, right. uh, take the risk of getting COVID, to to go to this event. It was kind of in the sticks a little bit. Uh, but I'm, I am willing to do this Zoom. So that's what we're going to do. It's, it's understanding, is this worth the time? Because it's not just two hours now, because now that's really over 48 hours of my time. I've got to plan the presentation. I've got to deliver the presentation. Now I've got to get in an airport and I've got to fly in. I've got to stay at a hotel. It just, I think just understanding, is this worth one of my 4,500 hours is, is a game changer. A, a friend of mine I went to college with, her name's Carrie Richardson, and she writes special books. She's an author. Every, every single person, by the way, she should be on your show. Okay. Uh, Carrie Richardson with an I, K-E-R-R-I. So she writes books on clutter. And she, uh, she teaches what's the message in the mess. And so when you begin to understand, okay, what, and she, so I've worked with her. She's also a life coach. What's the message in my mess? So for me, my living room, my kitchen, my cabinets are immaculate. My bedroom is immaculate, but not my bedroom closet. Not my car. I have a truck and I just bought a truck, a Nissan Titan. I love it. It's like, huge. I'm, like I'm a truck girl. Right? I love my truck. It's awesome. But it gets cluttered so fast. And so Carrie has been coaching me. What's the message in my mess? She wrote two books. What's, what's your clutter trying to tell you? And from clutter to clarity. And that's a game changer for me. And so I've been using this during the pandemic to use the law of, you know, taking some space instead of the law of attraction, the law of subtraction. And I'm really picky on what I'm removing. I'm removing friends. I have a friend uh, that I've been friends with for over 11 years. And I have realized that I was codependent. I was the codependent friend for her over the last two years. And she lives in Delaware. And every other week I would go visit her for four days. And all this person wants to do is have edibles or smoke marijuana all day long. Mm -hmm. That's not my, my cup of tea. And I'm like, why am I, why am I going two and a half hours in each direction to watch my friends get high? 
Like, no, I'm 51 years old. I have goals to accomplish. I'd much rather go home and clean my closet than sit here and watch her disappear. And so I had to say goodbye to that friendship just recently because I'm like, no, that's taking out of my 4,500 hours. That was taking every single month. I don't know. I'd go for three days. So it's six days a month times 24. Mm -mm. No. Bank of America is dedicated to bringing diverse women talent into the company and to supporting the economic empowerment of women around the world. Recognizing the vital role women play in driving economic growth, Bank of America helps women make connections to build their businesses and make meaningful contributions to local communities. Through partnerships with multiple organizations, Bank of America has helped more than 75,000 women entrepreneurs access mentoring and the capital they need to lead, create positive change, and grow their businesses. To learn more, visit bankofamerica.com slash women. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2021, Bank of America Corporation. So what I, I would add to this, and then I have a few body language questions for you because we haven't talked in a while about this, but I, I would add to this because I do um, dialectical behavior therapy. And one of the things that I learned in DBT is often when you're dealing with someone or something or a parenting thing, the, the first answer is to do less. Just do mm. less. You don't need to over-parent. You don't need to overdo. You don't need to overreact. Everything you're doing, if you're strung out, exhausted, and feeling like you don't have enough time in the day, you're doing too much. Do less in the moment. Because often when you're overdoing for people, they don't learn to respond in kind and meet you halfway. So in friendships, in marriage, as a parent, do yeah. a little less. Give them some space to come to you and help you out a little bit in the relationship. Fill some of that space in the relationship. And, and you know, if I can chime in, if I want to, if I can chime in really quickly, is own your stuff. Like one of my I am's is I am generosity. And I remember a, a friend of mine was take, 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 take. And I called her a taker behind her back. I go, she's a taker. And another friend of mine said, I'm going to invite you to reframe that. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, who's not going to take all your generosity that you're giving, your time, your money? I, if she needed something, I would buy it. Like you, if you liked my purse that I just bought in England, I'd say, here, take it. And I'd put all my stuff in a zip and I put my stuff in a Ziploc bag because I'm not connected to materialistic things like that. And I know you're not either. And so um, I, instead of me saying people are takers, I say, oh, they're not generous. They're, they're not generosity. I'm generosity. I want to attract people like you. You are one of the most generous, authentic people. And when we get into the body language part, I want to talk about something you did that made me like you as a human being, as a woman and as a human, something you did, a couple of things you did. All right. Let's get to it right now. Why do you like so, me? Okay. So, so Harvard- Wait, wait, wait. I then want to know if I, the, you brought up, if you can tell if your mother-in-law doesn't or doesn't like you. Oh, okay. Yes. Hear that, what that right. expression is, but okay. So, 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 that's funny. So uh, with regard to you and who you are as a person, Harvard Business Review did an article a couple of years ago. I think it came out in like 2019, 2020. And it talked about in order for um, us to trust you, you have to do something that you did and you you had nothing, you're no skin in the game. I'm a nobody, like no one knows who I am. So what did you, and I don't mean that in a, I, I have low self-esteem way, but I'm not a celebrity. I remember you had me on your stage. I was on two people, Sarah Jessica Parker and Martha Stewart were on before me and I'm the girl in the back of the room. No one knew who I was. And then amazing. I hit the stage and then I got the standing ovation. Thank you, God. So here's the deal is, Harvard Business Review published this article. I call it the caveman article. It doesn't say that in the article. If a cave woman comes to town, Mika Brzezinski, and am I asking, can she light a good fire? Or am I saying, is she going to steal my husband and leave me and the kids for dead? I'm first saying, can I trust her? Is she going to steal my husband and, and hurt me and the kids? Then I'm saying, can you light a good fire? See, many of us, when we meet someone for the first time, we tell you we're competent. That's lighting a good fire. We say, this is what I've done. This is my career. This is how long I've done it. This is how I can solve your problems. You're listing your, your competencies, which is great. But competencies connect with you should respect me. 
You should trust me is connected with warmth and likability. And that's what we look for when we meet someone first is, is this person trustworthy? Are they warm and are they likable? Are they real? Are they transparent? So any business call that you have, whether it's on Zoom or in person, any date you're going on, put your resume and your expertise aside and be warm and likable. And one of the ways to do that is just ask questions and be a good listener. And and what you did, Mika, that made me love you is, I don't know if you remember this, I probably still have it on my phone. If you want to post it to people, you can. But you sent me a video after I'd met you on the stage. It was like four in the morning, you were getting your makeup on and you sent me this video, no makeup, just started, exhausted. And you're like, hey, Janine, I just wanted to say hi. I think you had slippers on or pajamas at the time. I just want to call and say hi, and you sent me this video. Um, a couple months later, it was around New Year's, you sent me another video of you eating so much pizza that you were disgusted with yourself. You're like, this is this half of this pizza is gone because of me, and I'm not done eating it yet. And I know you've struggled with weight, which is sugar is my addiction for sure. And I, you're in my eyes, you're this celebrity, you're on television, you're Mika Brzezinski, you you know, Morning Joe, like you're me, know your value. And you're sending me a video at like one in the morning of you eating too much pizza. Wait, that sounds creepy. I, th- I think I'm creepy. No, you are, you're just warm, <laughs> likable, transparent. Oh. And I'm telling you, I've told every single person, I don't care what your political beliefs are, if you are Democrat or Republican, that you are the kindest, most loving, real, authentic person I've ever met. And so it comes from that. Like, I... A, trusting that I'm not going to go put that on YouTube or on Facebook or that that you, a stranger you just met, you're trusting me immediately, which then makes me trust you a thousand times more. I'm, I'm your raving fan because of this. And I think a lot of us get this messed up. We want our body language to be perfect and we want to go in steepling like 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 we used to see in the Simpsons, Smithers, you know, our fingertips, yeah. touching our fingertips, like a prayer hand, steepling. Oprah Winfrey does this. It's power, authority, and confidence. And you go into your job interview doing this, and Dr. Phil would say, how's that working out for you? Instead of just being warm and likable, today, because we are on Zoom, we're seeing, I have a new puppy upstairs. She may come down in a second. A Labrador, she's 12 weeks old. We're seeing your house, you're seeing my my downstairs guest bedroom, you, you're, you're hearing my kids come in. It's a different world today. So if you're using the techniques you used to use, as many people you started the podcast that love to work from home, well, then that warmth and likability has to continue to come through, even if you are back in the office. And for supervisors, we have to remember that it, it's never going to be what it used to be. Because now we're family at the end of the day. Totally agree. And I think when you're on Zoom, um, whether you're in person or on Zoom, you got to get your game face on. I think body language has a lot to do with your face, your eyes, your voice, your posture. Well, hand gestures on Zoom, you can see my hands. Listen, a study was done. They looked at two TED Talks, right? Two different TED Talks, same name, same concept. The per- the TED Talk that was watched by millions had more hand gestures. So a lot of us, when we do these these like online functions, we just show our face. And for those of you who may be watching, you see just my face now. And we don't see any hand gestures. That hurts credibility and likability. And again, more than likability equal trust. So we want to see your hand gestures. So for me, I have it up on a, a box and then three reams of paper. And my light is behind it. Uh, I'll even show you for the people that are watching. This is how this is how high it is because I want that downward angle. I can see your hand gesture, so you're seeing my hands. It increases warmth and likability. So seeing hands, I think also like position of the face. I'm just saying a lot of us when we're scared, especially women over 50, 60, we get like a frowny. No. Let's, let's open up our face and let's have that eye connectivity. And it's really important, even on Zoom, I'm looking at that camera button right there and I'm looking at you because I want to connect. Well, listen, I love that you're bringing up the I love that you're bringing up the face. Every Do a head tilt for me, Mika. Just tilt your head to one side. When we tilt our head, that says we're listening, but it also says you don't have a good head on your shoulders. So in these interviews or in these business calls, watch the men versus the women. We'll tend to tilt our head more. We want to send the message, I have a good head on my shoulders. I can still listen with a head nod, but keep my head square in the middle of my shoulders. Be careful of these head tilts to the side. It is taking away your executive presence and your power. You want your head is on straight, literally that expression. Okay, hands, head on straight. And tell let's talk, I think voice is part of this. Don't you? 
Yes. So tone of voice, I have a whiny, squeaky voice. I'm from Boston originally. So that's my voice. However, if I was trying to influence someone right now, I would lower my voice a little bit. And not not to the point of, you know, uh, Elizabeth from Theranos over there that had this fake voice like this, right? So, but I want to lower it a little. I want I'm going to challenge all of you in these online Zoom meetings or if you're in person or even on a date, uh, if your tone of voice goes up, I want you to start to notice it. You can't unnotice it after I'm about to share this with you. If all of a sudden I'm like, Mika, how are you? How are the girls? How is everything? And my tone goes up, it means you feel less than that other person. So watch, if Oprah Winfrey comes in right now and I'm like, hey, everybody, guess what? It's my friend Oprah. Oprah came. She's going to be your tone goes up because you feel less than Oprah. If you're in a meeting and all of a sudden you notice that your voice has suddenly gone up, this is only happens when we feel less than someone. And the only time we should use it is if people are fighting and arguing. I don't want to be like, guys, enough with the arguing. You want to be, guys, guys, enough with the arguing. Come on, let's do a reset. So if you're stopping an argument, lift up your voice. However, if you notice it naturally happening, stop and ask yourself, why am I giving this person so much power over me? Why am I feeling less than that person? And then lower your voice. That increases your ability to know your own value. I think that it also, it, it boosts your value to have a, a nice, low, resonant voice. And not everyone has one, but you can find your lower register. And a lot of it hap happens to, it just, ha it happens when you slow down when you take a moment and allow your neck not to own your voice. I mean, when the voice is up in the neck, it's not a good sound. This is my biggest challenge for me, being from Boston, talking 100 miles an hour. I was on NPR when one of my books came out and it's like, welcome Janine Driver, her book, you can't lie to me, Janine. And I remember I was like, hi, Bob. And he's like, tell us three tips on how to tell if our kids are lying. I'm like, well, Number one, and at the end of the interview, my friends were in the green room waiting. It was in California. And they go, Janine, I've never heard a better interview of you ever. And all I did was slow it down. And the guy who interviewed me said it was one of the best interviews he's ever had. Instead of giving 10 tips, I gave three. But I slowed it down. It's, I work on this. This is my negative. Well, for I... I I really struggled with it for years, and I speak to women on stage a lot about tempo, voice, rhythm, not allowing the room to be something that you feel the need to fill with words. Like that shows nervousness, in my opinion. There's the power of silence as well as having a slower, calmer approach that will put your voice in a lower register. So before we go, how do I know she doesn't like me? What's the tick on the face? Come on. All right. To know whether your mother-in-law or anyone doesn't like you, you're going to look for disgust. And it may sound easy, but disgust is either the nose wrinkling or the upper lip slightly coming up. So subtle like this. So you may share a story and I go, huh, that's funny. And just my upper lip, for the people who are watching, you can see my upper lip comes up. I see a little more teeth. Kato Kalin did this when Marsha Clark said uh, with the OJ Simpson case, isn't it true you've got a book deal? And he's like, it's like, like you, explicit word right there. So that disgust. And by the way, many people will think it's anger, but anger is so easy to overcome. If you have a mother-in-law that's always angry, I'm letting you know anger is often a secondary emotion to fear, anxiety, and sadness. It's likely that she's not angry with you all the time. Maybe she's intimidated or scared or anxious because she wants everything to go right for her son or her daughter. So anger, and plus, if it is real anger, anger is so easy to fix. Out of anger, contempt, and disgust, the easiest is anger. Anger itself, if it's real anger, means the person has a goal and they have a, a blockage to their goal, what they want. All you have to figure out is what's the block or their perceived block, remove that, and then help them get their goal. That's all real anger is. But over 80% of the time, anger is a secondary emotion to fear, anxiety, and sadness. So if you ask your kids, my puppy just arrived, if you ask your kids, hey, did you do your homework? Two teachers wrote to me, you're behind in your homework, and your son says, mom, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm working from home now again. You know, this is not easy. I'm not seeing my friends. The last thing you want to do as a mother is yell at your son or daughter. 
because I want you to imagine if it's really anxiety, instead of them screaming at you, if they said, Mama, I'm barely hanging on, I'm so stressed, that you wouldn't yell, you would come at it with compassion. So keep in mind that anger is a secondary emotion. And some of you may have been angry recently and maybe you owe some apologies. Maybe you need to own your truth and say, listen, I've been anxious and it's been coming out as anger and I'd like to do a reset. I do resets with my kids all the time because if you're a mother, if you're a parent, the mood or a boss or a CEO, the mood at the top is the number one thing that influences your team. So if your kids are your team, your company is your team, and it's not going well, people aren't getting along, check in with your attitude, your mood. The mood is influencing everything. It's like watering the garden. How are you watering the garden? COVID has put us through a lot, and I think a lot of people are really struggling and probably do have a lot of apologies that they need to get to. So great, great, great advice. And by the way, if you see that facial expression in somebody, it doesn't have to be your mother-in-law, you don't have to care. <laughs> Just saying, it doesn't matter if they like you. They must respect you. Uh, Janine Driver. Janine Driver is always awesome. Janine Driver with COVID has a special flair to it. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Oh, my gosh. I'm just grateful that I didn't cough through this whole thing. Uh, for anyone that's fighting COVID or anything, I, I say a prayer that an army and angels of angels protects you and your family and your community. It's a it's a crazy time. Be kind to yourself. Uh, you know, the person that we need to forgive the, that's the hardest to forgive is often ourselves. So if you're looking for permission, Mika and I give you permission to forgive yourself going into this new year. Oh, Janine Driver, thank you so much for joining us on Mika Straight Up. I love you. I look I forward you. to working with you in 2022 so we can hang out together and have pizza. I would love it. I would love it. I love it. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we have much more in the next episode of Mika Straight Up. You're going to love it. Thanks, everyone. Bank of America is dedicated to bringing diverse women talent into the company and to supporting the economic empowerment of women around the world. Recognizing the vital role women play in driving economic growth, Bank of America helps women make connections to build their businesses and make meaningful contributions to local communities. Through partnerships with multiple organizations, Bank of America has helped more than 75,000 women entrepreneurs access mentoring and the capital they need to lead, create positive change, and grow their businesses. To learn more, visit bankofamerica.com slash women. What would you like the power to do? Copyright 2021 Bank of America Corporation.